Amen. Thank you, Ben. Goodness gracious. You got to love the way they just usher in the presence of God. God is amazing. And, you know, for those of you watching online, um, we have directed you to Facebook Live because we were having te technical difficulties. We're working on that. Um, updates. What, you got to have updates every once in a while. We're having some updates. They're just, it's updating right now as you speak. Things are happening in the wide world web that is fixing our streaming solution. So hopefully we'll get that fixed soon. But in the meantime, Facebook Live, send, if you're watching on Facebook Live, send a text message to your friends and tell them they can watch on Facebook Live through Lifesong Tampa on our Facebook page. That is streaming well. And we are working through these issues, and we'll have them fixed next week. You know, speaking of issues, you remember when the disciples were on the boat, and it was just going crazy. It was storming, and, it was, and they're running around. They're freaking out. And Jesus just looks to them and says, peace, be still. And it just calms their heart. Yeah, everything's running around. Yeah, the water's still out there. <laughs> you know, Jesus said, peace be still. But the ocean was still, the sea was still the sea. They weren't on the ocean, but the sea was still the sea. But Jesus said, peace be still. See, it's not just about what's on the outward, it's on the inward. When you can quiet your spirit, you can quiet your soul and remind yourself that God is in control. So this morning, peace be still, the Lord just wants to speak on Facebook Live. He wants to promote that platform and speak to you right there. I believe somebody is here and somebody's listening. The people that are here and people watching online, they're going to hear us a now word that the Lord has for us this morning. And the person's bringing it. I'm so excited. My good friend, we go way back, Mr. Michael Donovan. Yeah! That's very kind. Thank you. It's funny when... He said, issues, I thought he was going to say my name next. Uh, seriously. <laughs> but good morning, Life Sock. Nice to be with you today. I just snorted. I don't know if anyone heard that. That's all right. Uh, how's everybody? Good? For the millions of people watching on Facebook, hello? Uh, no, there's not millions? Okay. Well, that's fine. Maybe one day uh, as it streams throughout the rest of eternity online. But... Uh, Really grateful to be here this morning, and I want to thank Pastor Savannah and Katie. <laughs> I am not going to cry. This is emotional. I know it's, you're all looking at me like, who is this guy? Okay, let me explain. I'd like to, uh, the question is, who are you? And if I may, I'd like to break that down into two separate questions. Who? Who is a question that humanity has been asking for thousands of years? Who? The next part of that question is, are you? Yes, I am. So I hope that uh, answers who I am today. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, are we awake this morning? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Uh, I'll catch up. So we are here because Pastors of and Katie have a vision. And I'm here because these folks showed my family some incredible love. And for that, I want to publicly, 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 oh boy, here we go. I want to publicly acknowledge them <laughs> and say thank you. All right, so how many are grateful this morning that you're not where you used to be, okay? You're not where you want to be, but thank God we're not where we used to be. I'm thankful for that today. Clap once if you're with me. Okay, that was two of you. Thank you for those two. Uh, in my line of business, people try to make a living at recreating reality to make it appear as if it's happening for the first time right before you. Some people call it make-believe, uh, pretending, lying, faking. I like to call it acting. Thank you. Uh, so... Have you ever gone to a movie and gotten really sad, really angry, fearful, surprised, happy, disappointed, real visceral emotions just watching a movie? This is the entertainment industry. They like to trick your mind so you experience something as if it was real, but obviously wasn't. If you were there on set when they were filming it, you'd see 100 people 
running back and forth, hair and makeup, audio, lights, cameras, all that. But to create this facade. But you somehow experience real emotions. Why is that? The title of the conversation I'm bringing you today is Reality Check. Okay, so let me say a reality check. Reality check. All right, there we go. Clap one time, reality check. There we go. All right. I had a, uh, a magic trick that I was going to do for you today. <laughs> I know magic is uh, the wrong word for church. Illusion. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to show up and start, like, levitating stuff. And it's not, not appropriate for church. So an illusion is more of a better term. The illusion I was going to bring to you today is something you've probably seen some illusionists do. Everyone ever see someone bend a metal spoon with their mind, right? This is interesting. How do they do that? Some would say, wow, they got mental powers. Pretty impressive. No. <clears throat> Spoiler alert. The spoon's cut in half. And they're holding it right where it's broken. And so they let up a little bit, and the top of the spoon moves down. I didn't have a metal spoon to bring to you today cut in half. I would have had to have gotten a saw. I would have had to have gotten a spoon out of the drawer. And I don't think that would have gone over well. <laughs> so, how about a plastic fork? Okay. So I saw a plastic fork in half, right? <clears throat> it's not here today because I ran it by my wife first. It looks stupid, okay? <laughs> so you have to just imagine in your mind a plastic spoon that I just made bend and brought back. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. For the people watching online, there, someone was amazed over there. Appreciate that. Why is that? What is that called? I got a neuroscientific term for you. I don't think you've ever heard this before. I haven't. Amodal completion. Any uh, psychologists here? Neuroscientists? No, just me? Okay, that's fine. Uh, amodal completion. The definition is the ability to see an entire object despite parts of it being covered by another object in front of it. The bending spoon. It is one of the many functions of the visual system which aid in both seeing and understanding objects encountered on an everyday basis. In layman's terms, you can call it an optical illusion. Okay? If I had that spoon and you didn't know I cut it in half, it just looked the last time I bent a spoon was like ice cream. That was really hard, okay? There was no metaphysics involved. But if you were looking at that spoon and it just bent it on its own, that doesn't make sense. Why? Well, because kind of I'm familiar with spoons, all right? That was not a fat or weight reference, okay? Thank you. That wasn't funny. That was not funny. So you have this spoon. You've been around all your life, it's metal, you know it just doesn't bend on its own. But you see somebody bend it, what is that? That's your mind playing a trick on you. Amodal completion is point A to point B. There's no break in between. It's a straight line. So it should not just bend on its own. Deductive reasoning. So if that's true, then something else must be true. This guy must be possessed with devils. Uh, because he's making things happen that shouldn't be happening. But that's where your mind goes. We were, funny, we were driving to church today, past a bunch of billboards. Well, not a bunch. All right. I don't want to lie from up here. There was a couple. Maybe one, all right? <laughs> I'm very sensitive. Uh, Screamageddon, okay? Orlando, whatever, all right? Anyone going to Screamageddon? Not me. Now, what is Screamageddon? It's this thing at the park, the amusement park, and they create this illusion of, 
Like, that's supernatural. Okay, a bunch of demons or warlocks running around trying to scare you. That's not my idea of a good time, all right? But people go because they want that exhilaration of fear. They go for the experience. Their minds, they're, they're going to let you play a trick on their mind. They know it, but they can't stop the fear somehow. It just comes up. What is Screamageddon? Screamageddon is made up of Bob and Susie from accounting who like to play dress-up on the weekend, put on the makeup and the hair, and they get into this character, and they're like, ooh, and scream. And they create this illusion. Some of the funniest or most entertaining videos on YouTube are the prank videos. The one where they blindfold the friend, and they drive him out, and they think it's, he's you know, going off this bridge. They put him on this platform, and he thinks he's 100 feet in the air. He's experienced these emotions. You see them on the video, screaming, crying, please, no, don't. I don't want to do this. But in reality, he's three inches off the ground. That's funny. I'm sorry. Nah, no one, got, no one was hurt during the filming of the video. But anyways, so, and I don't want friends like that. Thank you very much. But they tricked him. But he was experiencing, or she was experiencing, these incredible visceral emotions. Why? A modal completion. Optical illusion. Your mind playing tricks on you. What does this have to do with today? And what I'm going to talk about. Let's go to the Bible. Numbers 13, 1 through 3. We'll start there. You got it up there? The Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites from each ancestral tribe. Send one of its leaders. So at the Lord's command, Moses sent them out from the desert of Paran. All of them were leaders of the Israelites. These are their names. And if you want, for time's sake, I'm not going to read their names, but they're there. <laughs> Jump down to verse 18. See what the Lord is like. Oh, sorry. See what the land is like. I just rewrote the Bible there. I'm sorry about that, God. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak. Now, this is Moses talking to them. He's talking to the 12 spies he's about to send out. Those 12 folks were... Not just uh, the lay person in the tribe. They were leaders. They were respected. Okay? That's who he's sending out. And he wants a full detailed report. What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit from the land. I like that. Moses wanted an edible arrangement. He wanted a little fruit. We're going to get into that too. Keep going. We're at uh, verse 22. They went up through. So they went out and explored the land from the desert of Zin, as far as Rehob, toward Lebo, Hamath. I looked up these names. Very interesting pronunciations. Thank you very much. They went up through the Negev and came to Hebron, where Ahimon, Sheshai, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, lived. Hebron had been built seven years before. When they reached the valley of Eshkol, in the valley of Eshkol, that's interesting, because that's where they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole, along with some pomegranates and figs, which is interesting because... Last time I went to the grocery store at Publix, a cluster of grapes I could fit in my hand. You know what I'm talking about. This one, for some reason, they had to have a pole with two guys on either side carrying it. Somebody say a reality check. What's that about? That was their reality. That wasn't assumed. That wasn't mustered up. That was real. That place was called the Valley of Eshkol because a cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. And at the end of the 40 days, they return from exploring the land. Now, 40 is a very important number 
in this story. And if you have a chance, sometimes here this week, uh, I don't have the time, but go into it and really read it because there's a lot of interesting bits of information and principles in life that you can apply. So they go and spy out the land. 40 days. Okay? What's interesting about this is they're right on the outskirts of God's promised land for them. Okay? It's about a two-week journey. It took them 40 days because they're on a reconnaissance mission, right? They sent them out to bring back a detailed report. And so it took that long. But in reality, it was just if they just walked without doing any exploring, it was about two weeks. Are you right on the cusp of your promised land? Are you like right there? You can see it, but it looks, it doesn't look good. Concerning your destiny, your promised land, your path, what's, what is God asking you to do? See, God told Moses to send spies out. Is it because God didn't know what the land looked like? He needed the information also? No, of course not. God knew what it was. But sometimes you got to see it to believe it for yourself. And that can play with your mind. That can cause an optical illusion. You cannot see it for what it is. Your perception is your reality, but is your reality truly what's real? So you're at the cusp of your promised land. What are you doing? Are you doing your due diligence? Are you mastering your craft? Are you putting in your 10,000 hours? Are you gathering necessary intel for what God has for you? In verse 18, I like Moses. He's into the details. He wants to know everything. At the end of verse 20, let's bring back the grapes. Now, they went all over the map on this promised land. The hills, the valleys, the sea, they took it all in. Okay? That cluster of grapes was a significant sign of the supernatural provision that was waiting for them. But they didn't really see it for what it was. Don't dismiss or explain away the supernatural provision of God in your life. Because it just doesn't look... Yeah, it's significant yeah it's like it could be god but i'm not sure because just previously the israelites came out of egypt they walked on dry land through the red sea ah maybe it was a low tide you know maybe we could have walked anyways even if moses didn't lift his arms of course pharaoh was eventually going to let us go i mean come on it would have happened anyways Food falling from the sky happens all the time. <laughs> That's not really supernatural, is it? But at the end of the 40 days, we're back. Okay, great. What do you got? Oh, boy. What do you got? 27. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is the fruit. But the people who live there are powerful. The cities are fortified and very large. We saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along Jordan. Okay. They did what God asked them to do. They went and explored and they got the information. But now, how the information is processed. <clears throat> Don't you hate that? The but. Here it comes. But. <sighs> Caleb silenced the people before Moses and says, We should go and take possession of the land, for we certainly can do it. Twelve spies, okay? Twelve tribes. Ten brought back a bad report. Two, Joshua and Caleb, 
brought back the good report. 40 days. Why is 40 days significant in the story? Because the Israelites freaked out. The 10 had so much influence on the 2 million plus Israelites that they all turned and said, we're going to die. They're going to eat our women and children. They're everywhere, okay? This is not good, Caleb. Stop, okay? Come on, really. Let's be serious. All right, come, Look, you saw what I saw. For some reason, Joshua and Caleb said, we can do it. And that would come back and hurt Israel really bad. God was displeased with their lack of faith and their trust in him. Now, it wasn't just like they went on their own. God said, this is the land I'm giving you. God was in it. The Amalekites, the Hittites, the Jebusites. Our pets' heads are falling off. I didn't know one got that reference. <laughs> it's from a movie. Everything that could go wrong or look wrong, they're seeing it for what it is. Reality check. Is that truly their reality? They're bigger than us, okay? They're, they have walls, and they're really big walls. The sons of Anak, anyone a fan of Star Trek or anything like that? Borgs, okay? These are some Borg-looking dudes. These are not like you and me. These are like freaks of nature creatures coming out, okay? Like Thor, all right, those dudes from the other planet. Like, that's what they're looking at and seeing. Those ten tried to silence God's plan for them. They looked at it, and they said, we can't do it. But was that true? Was that a reality? No, it was a false sense of reality. Because they could do it. Because God told them it was theirs. How many know that God tells you to do something, there's still some stuff that you got to go through to get there? Okay, so let's just go up and take it now. The people, the ten spies, like Caleb, you're outside your mind. Can't do it. God did something to those ten spies. <laughs> Anyone want to guess what happened to the ten spies? God killed them. Oops. <laughs> My bad. So, not only that, but for every day that the Israelites, or that the spies were out. God gave them a year of wandering around the wilderness. That's why it was 40 years in the wilderness. They were right in the outskirts. They were two weeks away. The ten guys that knew the way, well, they're dead. Somebody probably knew kind of the direction they headed in. We could get there. But God said, no, you're going to wander for 40 years. And on top of that, Everyone in that generation is going to die. Even Moses. You're not going to see it. That's not fair. The folks that heard about the ten spies dying and what was to come because of their disobedience and their lack of faith and trust in God, a group of them decided, oh, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go. We're going to go, and we're going to take the Hittites, and we're going to, we're going to, we figured it out. Okay, our bad. We're going to do it. Moses said, are you outside your mind? Too late. The window's closed. You can't. We're going. Anyone want to guess what happened to them? <laughs> uh, yeah, the Hittites killed them. All right. Uh, you can't try and make up God's plan for your life. You can't try and, like, force it. You can't. How many have been discouraged with your path in life? Just not going the way you wanted it to. And on top of that, you got all these things around you. Doubt, fear, pain, depression, anxiety. Israel was freaked out. 
I'm sure if they could be on Zoloft, they'd be on Zoloft. Okay, Zoloft is anti-depression uh, medicine. 90% uh, of the world is anxious. And most of them, if they're not on anti-anxiety medicine, want to be. Why? The immortal completion. The devil wants to trick you into seeing something that's, he's saying it's real, but guess what? It's not real. The biggest trick the devil ever, ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. If he could convince you <laughs> that what you see, even though it's fake, appears to be real, he's got you. Because now, wait a second, if it hasn't happened by now, psh, it's not happening. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm, ta I'm, I'm getting a little watery because I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to myself as well, Okay. How close are you to where you think the promised land is? What's keeping you from possessing the promised land? They had a dis. What happened was 40 years later, Joshua and Caleb made it back. Everyone else was dead. But because they believed... They trusted God. They got the promised land. It wasn't all snowflakes. They had to dispossess those, en those same enemies that were still there to possess. The New York Yankees have a slogan in their weight room. All right, talk about the Yankees today. It's probably where the emotion is coming from. Uh, they lost. But it says on the wall of their weight room, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. If you know anything about the Yankees, they're the most winningest sporting franchise in all of history so far. That's probably going to change. <clears throat> there is work to be done. It wasn't all snowflakes and unicorns when Joshua and Caleb got to the promised land. So what is it that's keeping you from getting, dispossessing and possessing your promised land, your destiny, your future, your path? Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe it's bitterness. It's real hurt. Maybe you don't understand the Father's love. Because that's going to affect whether or not you get the full promised land. Because if you can't understand and connect with God's love, how can you love yourself? If you can't love yourself, how can you love others? It's just not going to happen. So you, you're, you don't have a Hittite. Okay? You don't have an Amorite. You don't have a Borg in your life keeping you and scaring you. But you have depression, maybe. You have anxiety. You have fear. Where does all this fear come from? It comes from the illusion that the world and the enemy wants to create for you to be real, but it's not. So check your reality. Because the reality for Joshua and Caleb was, we can. We can. God gave it to us. We can do this. If you don't incorporate and understand who God is and who he is and wants to be in your life, you'll never get to be able to See the promise light. You always be right on the outskirts. Just why, why, why? Complaining about why you're not there. Complaining why so-and-so is getting ahead and you're not. Sometimes it's just as simple as believing. The reality for you today and me, no matter how you feel or how it looks, God says, you have a hope in the future. The enemy says, you can't get over that wall. You can't compete with the size of that. You're not smart enough. You're not good looking enough. Yeah, you could lose a couple pounds. You know? What is it 
in your life that you're allowing the enemy to use to trick you into thinking that you can't do what God has purposed and gifted you to do. So check your reality. Because God is offering the reality of life and life more abundant. Okay? That's the reality. The enemy will throw everything at you to get you to believe something that's a lie, but as if it's really true. So check your reality today. Are you walking in the understanding of who God is and who God wants to be in your life and walking in that? Or are you held back by what you see and what you feel? So my prayer is that today we'll get a little bit closer to the promised land. We'll challenge ourselves to check what is real and what's not in our lives, what's a lie from the enemy, and what's something that we have to work on ourselves. So I hope that spoke to somebody today. Pastor Ben, thank you. Thank you all for listening. And uh, have a wonderful day. And go get your promised land. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. You know, it's, it's crazy how many all of us need to hear words like that because we go through life seeing things that it, it seems like it's impossible. I love being around people that say, like Joshua and Caleb, when I speak about something or a vision or let's do this. I mean, those jokers said the wording that they use, certainly you can do it. Certainly. I mean, you would think they would have said, um, Moses, this is going to be tough. It's going to be hard. There's some big guys, but I think we can do it. But they didn't even go there. They're just like, we can do it. If just three more people would have said, yes, at least you could have had like a 5-5 five, five and a discussion. But the odds were two yes, eight no. It's like, you know, it's forget it. It's amazing as a leader the decisions you have to make when you're listening to people and you're listening to volunteers and, and some are saying this and some are saying that and you just, you got to make a decision. But I love, in 20 years of youth ministry, we would have these grand ideas and dreams, things we wanted to do. And there are the kids in the youth group that always say, yes, you can do it. And when you're young, it's like, it's at least 70% of the youth group is saying, yes, we can do that. We have no budget, no money, but yes, let's have a mega concert. I mean, they're all excited about it. They just say, yes, we can do it. And then you always have, you know, 30% of these young people that are like really old for their age. And they're like, Pastor Van, I don't know how we're going to do that. We can't do this. We can't do that. We can't do that. I get it. But I love, my personality is that I see the cup half full. I mean, I look at it, I'm like, look, I know what it looks like right now, but God's pouring into it. So, man, thank you so much, Mike, for just stirring us and reminding us about this reality that God is in control and we don't have to look at by what we see in the natural. What is God saying? What is God saying to us? What is he saying to you in this moment? We have to grab hold of his word for our lives and say yes and amen. I was listening to that song that Aaron sings so well. Jesus, Jesus, I can't sing it. You know, Jesus, Jesus, you, you send dark, you make darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Man, you silence fear. There's so many times in my life, I mean, I'm just like, Jesus, Jesus. If I'm in the shower for more than 10 minutes, I'm crying out, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. For no matter what we're going through, the sins we have to make, I'm like, Jesus, what are you saying? What are you saying? I'm not going to listen to my emotions. I'm not going to listen to the world. I'm not going to listen to, the, to my flesh. Lord, what are you saying? And I need you to silence fear so I can walk in the word of the Lord for, for me as a, a husband, me as a dad, me as a father, me as a pastor. i got to silence fear so I can do what you're calling me to do. And who in their right mind is going to say, no, when God is saying yes. I mean, that's just stupid. If God's saying you can do this, you can do it. And sometimes you got to preach to ourselves. So thank you so much. That was an awesome one. Let's give it up one more time for Mr. Mike. And Katie has an announcement. She's going to come and share. Okay, yeah, uh, Mike, thank you so much for that word. That leads into some exciting news that I have. Deborah Cruz and I are going to be uh, doing a Bible study in two weeks on the power of prayer. 
We are going to be teaching on how to pray both strategically and biblically and how to fight our battles first in prayer. You'll need to purchase this book, The Battle Plan for Prayer. It's written by the Kendricks brothers and inspired by the amazing movie, The War Room, which we'll be watching at the culmination of our study. Uh, we'll be starting this in two weeks, which is October 24th at Deborah's home, about 10 minutes from Lifesong Church. And we will be having it from 10 to 11-ish. And if you would like to experience the transformational power of prayer, give me a call to sign up at 813-748-1715, or you can go to our website and contact us that way. If you can't attend but would still like to be a part, you can do that as well. Just contact me. Uh, after service, as always, Julie has a video for the kids that you can go ahead and watch that. And tonight at 7 p.m., she will have a Zoom call for the middle schoolers. All right, you guys have an amazing week. Remember to love out loud, and we will see you next Sunday.